Welcome to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Our first guest is the founder and visionary of the Innovative Group. Please join me in welcoming William Reed. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Welcome to Long Beach Lands. Now, I know we've got a lot to cover in a yeah. short period of time. Yeah. First, uh, share with everyone, who is William Reed and what brings you uh, to the show? All right. Well, first and foremost, thanks for everyone having me on the show. Thank you so much. Poetic D, right. appreciate it so much. Uh, born and raised in Kansas City. I moved out here about three years ago. Uh, I come from a very broken family. Um, I'm an alcoholic or was an alcoholic. I've been sober now for about two years. I moved out here for California just like everyone else did, just to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I, I had an, enough was enough for me. I knew, that, I, I knew that I couldn't get where I needed to go, where I was from. So I came out here with nothing, no one, less than $80 in my pocket. Uh, and I said, I have to make a difference. So mm -hmm. I, spent, I spent about a year being homeless here. Um, just to give a little bit about my background, my father, uh, was killed when I was four months old. I, uh, my mother was single, single, single parent, single family household, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, but the difference was, was something incredible that my father was uh, part of the black mafia in Kansas City and um, mm -hmm. in the Chicago. They called him the man that could not die. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot where I got my strength from. So I had to deal with a lot of things growing up. One was dealing with the consequences of my father being a murderer. So mm -hmm. he had to I had to deal with those people that he, mm -hmm. he harmed, you mm -hmm. know, so I had to learn to defend myself very quickly and very young. I had to depend on my thoughts and my strength mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to survive. Mm -hmm. And the second was, was that I didn't have a father. You know, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know what it felt like to have someone teach you how to ride a bike. I didn't know to have somebody to teach you it was okay to be a man in your home, you know. Mm -hmm. So those, those was, that was a big staple, you know. And, and for me, that, that made, my mother broke her word so much, but she didn't do it because she wanted to, but, but she had to. Mm -hmm. I, I remember watching her get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to be at work at 5.30 and then go from 5.30 to 9 or 10 o'clock. She was an RN. So those 16, 17, 18-hour shifts that she would work just to make sure that we were in a stable position. Mm -hmm. So the reason I say that is, is my background is that it's, it's a crucial point to make the person that I am now is that I've seen all these different things that I've overcome just to come out here and be here and be the person that I am. And my goal is to, to let you get to know why I am and who I am. So uh, eventually that I, I, I said I, I, I had enough. I said I was tired of working for, for someone, making someone else millions of dollars while I'm, I'm empty handed or I'm living off of crumbs. I said I don't want to be that anymore. And I started to see a pattern. You know, I started to see a marketing pattern. I, started, I came to California, I was expecting uh, this super high quality kind of atmosphere, which I got, but I also got this super low quality. You know, I've never seen the slums, because Kansas City doesn't have slums, you know? And so I start to see those slums, and I start to notice that the quality shifts. You know, it's, it's inconsistent. So that's where the idea of the Innovator Group came in, that I wanted to come together with people <coughs> of like-mindedness. Mm -hmm and give people the opportunity that says, hey, I got to do something different with my life. I have to be something better than what I am right now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I see that the room for opportunity out here, because if California is not doing it, nobody else is. All right, we're a leader you in know? many ways. Yeah. So as you step into that environment now, mm -hmm. you've come from Kansas City, you've come here, you went through the, the cycle of being homeless, you're mm -hmm. on your feet, you've got this vision right. uh, for what you want to do. How do you get other people involved First of all, to buy into this vision that you speak of, and then where do you lead them as a result of well, that? Well, so th th this is, the concept was, was that I didn't want people to change their buying habits. I just wanted to change where they were going to buy it. So I, I started looking for partnerships with people that were, for services that you're already using. You know, the, the, all, the products that we offer are wholesale discounted, like on T-Mobile, Verizon, Sprint. In all, all those different services that you have to use to, to maintain mm -hmm. your lifestyle. So mm -hmm. now the point is just to redirect it, redirect it to our leadership. And there's people out there that say, hey, I, I know people that use gas, electricity, home phone, cell phone, all those different things. And I say, yeah, now do you want to make money off of that? So let me ask you this, because you talked about mm -hmm. eliminating the victim mentality yes. attitude. What is the victim mentality attitude from your the, it, it's it, Blame game. I, I blame game and, and everything has to be perfect before I do anything mm -hmm. is the attitude. You know, it's always, I, I've noticed something 
when I when I was homeless was that it was a lot of blame game going on. And you know the funny thing about being a victim is 99% of the time you're right. That's what'll mess you up. Then you start finding other people to validate your rightness. You know, and then you start to then that starts to grow. And then more starts to grow. And then the next thing you know, now you're now, now your dreams is just so just some idea now. It's not even something that you're even trying to get because now it's just like it's not even worth it anymore. So and how the, do you shift to the positive attitude? That's what that's that's what we do. Okay. And, and that's and this is that's why it's called the Mahdi Seti rule. Okay. The Mahdi Seti rule is something very simple, is that Maat is a is a Egypt is a Egypt um, goddess, right? She is the person of truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, all of the positive qualities that someone wants to uh, wants to obtain or or already has, right? Mm -hmm. And Seti is supposed to be like the devil, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But the Mahdi Seti rule is something very crucial. So many people spend so much time on bettering themselves that they never find they never talk to the lower self. They never talk to the ego. They, they, they try to stop listening to it, and what happens is, is that that ego starts to master your life. It starts to master everything that you do. So now you're in a position where you just, where you can't figure out why you're doing so good sometimes, and then you just, and then you, then the littlest thing gets you aggravated or irritated. Like for me being a black man, I know my, my seti or my ego, it's very big when it comes to abandonment. I have, I have very big aband abandonment issues. So I, I know that that's my setting. That's the, so now the goal is to say, hey, when am, I, when am I being a sheep? When am I doing things that make me a victim? When am I placing blame on someone else? That, that, when am I putting an obstacle in front of me that keeps me away from my goal? And that's our, that's our main objective is to say, hey, I, don't want you, I want you to listen to that lower self. And that more importantly, I want you to observe that lower self so you can, so you can slowly start to eliminate it. And now you can actually start focusing on that higher self and get past that point. Uh, not everybody will know how to go through that process, yes. especially on their own. Right. So I would imagine in working with That's you exactly. and your team, you can walk Absolutely. people through that. Uh, we've, right. I've had the luxury of meeting multimillionaires and ha under their mentorship. Mm -hmm. And it was what the principles that they were using were very similar to the ones that I already knew. But it was funny because they showed me how to take it in action. Mm -hmm. They showed me how to do it in action versus just an idea, you know, and now it's like, wait a minute, this is what you need to do to stop being a victim. Mm -hmm. so instead of being a victim, be a victor. What do you need? What do you need to do to be that Jay-Z or be that or be that whoever that you want to be? Mm -hmm. Because of the, pro the problem is not the world. The problem is you. So it sounds like then and what you're doing in this community is it's, it's first starting with looking at yourself and true reflection Mindset is the most important of who thing. you are. And then as you get the self focused, then you can look at outwardly how do you right. pursue your dreams because right. they can be attainable. Right. And 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 along that continuum, working with people such as yourself, you yes. can help people see that. Well, because I, I, I won't let you I'm non negotiable when it comes to excuses. I won't let your excuses be the thing that keeps you from elevating yourself to the next level. Mm -hmm. Because ego does two very crucial things. It keeps you familiar and it keeps you safe. Any, anything that you, anything that keeps you comfortable is your ego. Mm -hmm. Anything that puts you in a position that keeps you in the same situation is your ego. Mm -hmm. So I got to take you out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You got to do it willingly though, because we can't go anywhere unless it's willingly. Yeah, but how do, if someone's been, I mean, for so, I've heard the saying, for instance, when I was in Alabama, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, mm -hmm. right? And so people don't, can't see their way out. So it's not that they don't want to do it, it's just that they don't know how to do it. The people that are right there right. are the closest to being to the next level than anyone else. Okay. The people that are right, all they need is someone that is non-negotiable. Okay. That will not say, okay, I'll give you a break. Okay, I know you've been through it. My, my father was a murderer. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> serial. I had, to I had to deal with that from the jump to finish. So I promise you, being the size that I am and being the guy that I am, I've had to go through it on a continuous basis. Somebody did the same thing with me. Right. They said, you got to break the barriers. You're, just, you're, you're this close to getting everything that you ever wanted in your life, but it's gonna, this is going to be the hardest part. It's the darkest before dawn, so to, think, so to speak. Now, you also talked about, in, in the notes that I was reading, about uh, a leadership school. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah. How, how do you see that so, coming to life? The, the idea is that I, I've, I marketed 
or I researched for about two years on different products and services, on leadership, on all these different things. Making money is not a big deal. Shifting a mindset is. Becoming a leader is going to be the hardest thing that, that we're ever going to produce. Making a million dollars is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Shifting a mindset is a huge thing. And that's the point of it. That's the point is to surround ourselves. It's just, to, it's just to collide with each other. It's just to have a conflict, a necessary conflict for all of us to grow all at once versus me doing it and then showing you how good I am. We got to do this together collectively. So we have less than two minutes. This time has flown by. Really? <laughs> yes. So let me ask you this. First of all, how do we reach out to find out more about okay. the innovative group? Okay, that's, the innovative group. So the, uh, the slogan is this, uh, where, where thoughts collide with action. Okay. That's the idea of the whole premise of the innovative group, is that to get people to a point where they, they want to be a part of this organization. So okay. if anyone that's interested in being a part of a leadership, or if anyone that's interested in, be, in making money off of energy, uh, any uh, essential services, you, mm -hmm. you visit that website, someone on my team, or I will personally get back to you. Okay. And that's for anyone at any place in life because Absolutely. All, of us, all of us Absolutely. Have, have those those pros and cons that, that we face. Right. Right. So you are going from homeless to sitting here looking <laughs> sharp in your suit. Yeah. And, and the battles that you've overcome in your life, yeah. I commend you for the for the, the courage and the strength. Thank you. Uh, that you've shown uh, to be the man that you are today. Can and, I tell you And doing more? the things that you, well, we're out of time. <laughs> but you can come back someday. Okay. Okay. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, joining us in the studio will be Marcel Epley from the Long Beach Community Foundation. Stay tuned for more of Long Beach Land. They have uh, offered me opportunities. They allow me to utilize equipment that they have. I get to practice more so than I would with the supplies that I have, with the equipment that I have. Uh, I'm learning how to work again with more people. 
and how to actually work in the actual studio and working with the cameras and hands-on. I remember they said like lamp as in leadership, you know, I learned a little bit about how to become a leader as well as like, you know, communicating with the people I work around with. You know, after being here, you know, all the teaching, all the skills I've been learning, it, you know, it became easy. It's like learning the alphabet. And from like, you know, we start from the bottom and then we go up. We start learning all these new skills. Things that we thought that it was, you know, really hard becomes easy. Welcome back to Long Beach Lens. I'm Derek J. Simpson. Our next guest is the president and CEO of the Long Beach Community Foundation. Please join me in welcoming Marcel Effley. Hi, Marcel. Hi, Derek. How you doing? Great, great, great. <laughs> so it's so much to talk about, and we have just a little time. But let's start out for those who don't know Marcel. Tell us a little bit about you and your background and what brought you to the Long Beach Community Foundation. Sure. So I've been in Long Beach about 20 years, grew up in the uh, South Bay, okay. came out to go to Cal State Long Beach, go beach, yeah. and uh -huh. uh, got my master's from there. So kind of spent a lot of time here working and living in Long Beach, uh, Press Telegram, Long Beach Transit, got to know literally every street in Long Beach oh, and wow. uh, all the zip codes from, you know, newspaper delivery to um, bus routes wow. and um, from working with a board and being very much involved with the community and volunteering and things like that. Um, I fell into the Community Foundation and it was a perfect transition because I've always been about trying to make a positive change in Long Beach and that's exactly what the Community Foundation does. So for those who don't know that mission, can you tell us exactly what the Community Foundation's mission is? Sure, so the Community Foundation has existed, like I said, for 20 years. Community Foundations have been in the United States for over 100 years, and they're set up to make a positive change in the community. Our mission is specifically to make a positive impact on Long Beach through charitable giving, stewardship, and strategic grant making. And mm -hmm. what I mean by strategic is our board of directors, headed now by Gary DeLong, our board chair, is to make a positive impact through Long Beach because we want to make sure whatever the highest and best needs are of the community that we're answering to. So every year our board with our discretionary dollars, it's a, a, a sort of a pot of money that we can give to a nonprofit or a school or a, um, a charitable group to, to solve sort of the issues that are happening within the community. Now, I know that when I was reading through your materials, we talked about uh, individuals and families and, and giving. And if I'm an individual or if I'm a family and we're looking at, you know, the legacy of the family or we're looking at, you know, assets that the family has, how should we think about that in the context of the foundation? Sure, so the foundation is about 32 million in charitable funds and there's okay. about 145 different funds that do different different things and function differently. So for families, uh, in lieu of a private family foundation, they can set up uh, what's called a donor advised fund, which is uh, similar to a, a family foundation, except the community foundation handles all the administration. So there's no tax forms, there's no people you have to hire to administer it, and think of it sort of as a, a charitable giving account uh, that right. you can online very quickly and easily make a grant to your favorite uh, charity, your favorite school, make a donation. That initial uh, deposit, if you will, or that uh, lump sum that people you choose to start up mm -hmm. the fund uh, is immediately tax deductible. And it can come wow. from cash, it can come from a real estate sale, from mm -hmm. appreciated stock, um, mm -hmm. and several other sources uh, that can be liquidated and turned into a charitable fund. It's the easiest and most cost efficient way to do your giving in, in Long Beach or throughout the United States. Now is, that, um, is there a minimum if there's a family that says, wow, we're we don't have much, but we do want to contribute. Is there a minimum to that, or is, is it just anyone who wants to do that as a family? Sure. So families, it's $2,500. Okay. Uh, so that's set low on purpose so that right. families and friends can get together and uh, give to a charity that they care most about. Mm -hmm. And um, there's other types of funds like scholarship funds and designated funds, and those minimums are a little bit higher uh, and with different restrictions. But a, a basic charitable giving account, anyone can set up for $2,500. So it sounds like this is just the, the, per the perfect opportunity for someone who has a cause or who feels philanthropic but maybe isn't the best of administrators and this just takes all the pressure off, huh? They can just work with you to focus on doing what they do best and that's helping others. Sure, and the other uh, part a community foundation can be valuable is in 
um, uh, working with you to find out what your charitable interests are. So mm -hmm. if you want to support women and children, or dogs and cats, or education and youth, uh, mm -hmm. we can help direct you to those organizations uh, that are doing the best work. Right, right. I, I didn't think of it in those terms, but that's right, because you're vetting. Uh, uh, you, I think we were talking uh, recently, and you said there's like 1,800 nonprofits or... There are a lot of nonprofits yeah. just in Long Beach alone, yeah. but do you know those numbers are going down each year? They're going really? down Long Beach and they're going down nationally uh -huh. because nonprofits aren't able to continue to compete for the operating dollars that are out there. Yeah. When we convened yeah. local philanthropists last year and had a big uh, grant uh, collaboration grant opportunity to nonprofits in Long Beach, uh, that's something that we're hearing a lot of. We're always trying to also encourage nonprofits to collaborate together right. so that they uh, can be more efficient with their resources. Now, one of the things that uh, was mentioned in uh, some material I read too was the fact that you focus on nonprofit sustainability. How is that done in more detail? Sure. So the nonprofits that we work with that range from Long Beach to Torrance, even Santa Monica, okay. uh, they are looking to have long-term um, uh, income so to support mm -hmm. their operations. So mm -hmm. typically that's done through an endowment. And a lot of times a, a, a charitable person will leave a gift in their will, sometimes the gift of real estate or a portion of their estate. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to start a long-term endowment for those nonprofits. So that income stream sustains them forever. What if, uh, let's say I, I'm from Mobile, Alabama, for instance, and I have property back there. If a person has property or assets in another state, can they still work with you, even if they're a Long Beach resident? Or Absolutely. Does it have to be California? Sure. So our expertise is Long Beach. We know Long Beach nonprofits. We right. know the uh, charitable landscape. Uh, but we have the ability to work nationwide. Okay. That's cool. Now, I also read about professional advisors that uh, maximize the client's charitable gifts. How, how does that part work? Sure. So I'm um, proud to say I'm the president of the State Planning and Trust Council where uh -huh. the Community Foundation started okay. uh, uh, 20 years ago. But with that group, they're probably the, the people that we work with most. So estate planning attorneys, if they have clients that are, uh, you know, they don't, they want to direct their estate towards a charity or a portion of their charity, they'll bring us in because it's a one-time gift. The gift is made to the Long Beach Community Foundation from their will or trust, and then from there they can designate it out where they would like it to go. But as you know, some people make uh, changes frequently within their trust uh, throughout their years, and yeah. that's one thing they don't have to change because we keep a separate document on file, and they can come into our office anytime and change their beneficiary, change um, their focus, and uh, they, we work with them to do that. Now, is that, would it be you that they would be speaking with, or you have a team as a staff? We have a great team of people and an outstanding right. board. Um, myself, we do keep a small uh, staff so that we can be right. efficient with our resources. Colleen Bragaloni is our vice president, former executive director of the Rotary Charitable Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, and, and she's there. We also have Tara Sievers, our office coordinator, and I can tell you these two women are absolute uh, powerhouses and right. w the three of us, uh, the three amigos, we really get a lot of work done very efficiently and are very knowledgeable. We also have a back office provider uh, with all of the uh, trust attorneys, CPAs, tax advice that can help nonprofits and you as an individual looking to give to charity. So I like to say that we are uh, highly local. All of our all of our uh, finances here, F and M Bank, we're, mm -hmm. we're Long Beach. We do business Long Beach, uh, but we have this great national uh, back office that really provides a resource to Long Beach. Well, I want to thank you on behalf of PadNet because for those who may or may not know, uh, the genesis of PadNet was with the Community Foundation and your support in helping us uh, get the Knight Foundation grant that uh, helped us leverage getting the PEG funds to start PadNet TV. I know that was before your time, but it's sure. part of the, the foundation legacy. Yeah. When you and I met recently, you introduced me to the concept of this new project that's coming up called around the table event and it's uh, something that's happening nationally and there's a lot of information to share so tell us what it is and why people who are watching should care about it here in Long Beach. Well this is going to be very transformative. It's going to be what will be the largest community dialogue um, in one day citywide in the history of Long Beach. Wow. We in are the going to in the history of Long Beach. Wow. Yes. That's and, a powerful statement. And well, um, I don't know that we've convened uh, mm. thousands of people in one day to talk about what they care about in our city um, right. in one day. I know that's been done over courses of you right. know, w weeks and months and years. But to, to go back in time for a moment, uh, two years ago, um, uh, there was a media learning seminar where the Chicago Community Trust, this is a conference held by the Knight Foundation, mm -hmm. which is one of our, which was one of our clients, 
And they showed this, um, presented this concept of on the table that was done in Chicago three years ago. They had um, over 10,000 people the first year come together and talk about how they can improve their city. I was immediately hooked and came back to Long Beach from Miami and met with Scott Jones from We Love Long Beach who is doing a lot of this type of work in our community and has been doing it for nearly 10 years and asked him if he would consider partnering with us on this. Fast forward another year, the Knight Foundation makes another opportunity or makes an opportunity for uh, cities around the United States to win a grant to have this in their city. So Scott and mm -hmm. I jumped on that. We received a grant from the Knight Foundation. Wow. So this year we are one of 10 cities nationwide participating on the On the Table initiative. We're calling it Around the Table. Okay. And how it's going to work is people are going to gather around tables throughout Long Beach in one day on September 23rd. They can gather to break bread for breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, mm -hmm. appetizers, wine and cheese, uh, whatever works for them. They can gather in homes, in coffee shops, in libraries, fire stations, mm -hmm. uh, restaurants. It's all on the website, which is mm -hmm. www.aroundthetablelb.com. And when people go to the website, they can be a host or a participant. And does now, and we have just about two minutes left. Well, when they go to that website, uh, it tells them what it re what's required to be a host or participant, so that people know exactly what they're getting into. They'll know right? exactly what they're getting into about two weeks before. They'll have a host toolkit where they'll be able to pick up with all the information. Right. They'll be able to host in their homes. They can meet people at a restaurant. You can have a private hosting where it's not published on the website, right. or you can have a public hosting. Maybe a restaurant might do that and invite people in. The 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 uh, there can be a super ho super host. I know the Assistance League of Long Beach is going to be a super host with several tables of six to ten people. Wow. The host will be given instructions specifically what to do and how to host people and an optional um, uh, gift card they can use to buy uh, supplies and, and refreshments. Uh, but we hope to get thousands of people around tables uh, on, sept uh, on September 23rd to answer two questions. What do I love about Long Beach? And what can we around this table do to make it even better? And we're, we're absolutely delighted and a proud uh, sponsor to do this. Wow, and then those uh, results will be those made results, available later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, so the people that are, are gathering around the table will be asked to submit a survey, and that survey will kind of help us gauge what are the major um, things in Long Beach that people want to see better, what, what issues are going on, and that'll help guide the Community Foundation's resources um, for grant making, for our focus, and for, for other things going into the future. Wow, sounds amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. And I'd like to thank William Reed and Marcel Epley for joining us on today's show. Be sure to follow PadNet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. We also welcome your comments and thoughts regarding this show as we strive to make Long Beach Lens a favorite source of local news, information, and entertainment. This show has been brought to you with support from the Long Beach Community Action Partnership, helping people, changing lives. Thank you for watching Long Beach Lens. <laughs>